who are ready to be instructors. Uh, we opened a school at Panola, which is how I met Ms. Barr. How, well, I already knew Jackie, but for some reason she came up here from Vallejo, which was weird to us. Um, but that's how we met Ms. Barr. We would have never known her if we didn't have a school in Panola. Um, but unfortunately, uh, didn't have the instructors long enough. I'd have a couple instructors, they'd last a few years, and then they had to do other things. A couple more last a couple more years, they had to do other things. And so in the last couple years, I found myself running from here to there, back and forth, back and forth, trying to do both schools. And, and finally, my, my better half was like, this is wearing you down, um, this is not gonna work. So that's why I closed Panola School in, in 2018, and we only had one location. And then of course, COVID hit. And COVID tried to take us out, you know, and, and the, the, the few and most of you guys stuck through COVID. I remember Styles running around in, on the living room floor on Zoom, <laughs> acting crazy, but he stuck through it. Zion um, too. Zion too. Yeah, all you got. Zion, they, you on Zoom too? No. Okay, so you came after COVID. They were still little eagles. Ah, okay. Christian, him and his brother, <laughs> brother trying to. Christian tried to do his class, hung in there. Um, so you guys knew what it was like. And, and we were down to like 30, 40 people. It was bad. But thank God now, God has blessed us. And you guys have been seeing it. We're, we have close to 300 students um, rotating it. Not at the same time as mine, but rotating through. And to make that happen, uh, we had to bring another instructor on staff. And as, as we get ready to expand more, we need more people. So that means you have to have a strong bench. What does that mean? People who are ready, who are trained, who are, who are assisting learning as they go um, so that when the opportunity arises, then we can move forward with the vision of, of multiple schools. Um, part of that is learning how to mentor, how to instruct, how to train, uh, even with your peers, you guys are all young in that back row back there, but you, one of the, one of the first rules that my instructor taught me when, uh, my first instructor, when we, when I became a yellow belt, color belt, and you guys have to learn the same thing as one of the ones we carried over. It says, um, always set a good example for lower ranking belts. You can't set a good example sometime. You can't set a good example only when you come into the dojo. You have to set a good example all the time. And I didn't do it right away. It took me a while to actually learn that principle and then let that become part of who I am. But now it's the number one thing. And so when I see color belts, that's the first thing you learn when you get your yellow belt, right? But now as you go higher up the rank, it becomes even more and more important. So everywhere I go, it's important that I set a good example because you never know who's watching you. You really don't. I get things sometimes like, oh, Master Jones, I saw you somewhere. I'm like, you did? Because I didn't see you. But people see you, people are watching you, they're watching how you react, how you talk to people. Um, let's say you go into the store somewhere and, and the cashier or whoever working in that store, they didn't treat you to your, how you start yelling at that person and, and this and that, maybe even some bad words slip out. I ain't gonna say nobody's name. Whose children said they'd be using bad words, but I ain't saying nobody's name. I'm just, yeah. I ain't saying nobody's name. But let's just say you say something or you react but one of your students or one of the student's parents are watching you react incorrectly to these people. Now, what do you think they think about you? Or what do they think about the school? Or what if you're a student at a school and you talk back to your teacher, uh, you mistreat your teacher, you disrespect it to your teacher, the other students are around watching you, and now what do they think about you? So it's important that, and that goes towards our character, right? Um, our character is being developed every day. Even, even those of us who are old, we're still learning. Uh, hopefully we're still growing, getting closer to, to God. Uh, we're getting stronger. But our character is being developed and how we portray that when we go out in public is very important. All right, so this is not even on the mat stuff. It's just, who am I? Who am I really? Who am I deep down? When people see me, I like, I like this phrase, because I've seen it a couple of times. When you die, what do you want people to say about you? What do you want on your gravestone? What do you want your obituary to read? Um, do you want it to read that you were a person who, who exhibited love, respect? Um, you were nice and kind to people. You were courteous. Uh, you, you helped. You did community work. You did community service. You mentored others. 
or do you want it to just say uh, he made a lot of money, she made a lot of money? What up? What do you want yours to say? That's that's important. What kind of legacy do you want to leave? And so, as instructors and future instructors, our character is important. How do we improve on our character? Just throw out a few things. Doing inventory on yourself. Take an inventory of yourself. See where you are, and then do what? If, the, if there's some corrections yeah. needed, correct it. What else? That's good. Yes, Christian. To try to like discipline yourself. Okay. In times that might be that might struggle, or if someone, like you said, if someone was not treating you properly, to discipline yourself, not act crazy, all out on them. That's good. I like that. We uh, Asan's mom was just talking about discipline. We were talking about banana pudding and other stuff. You might really want it, want it, want it, want it, but you sometimes you just gotta discipline yourself to not do it. Yes, Asan. Somebody being rude with you don't always resort with anger. Ooh, that's good. Don't always, hopefully never. But we do know anger is a real emotion, isn't it? So one of the things we learn in Taekwondo and martial arts is we don't let anger overtake us. You might be angry, angry inside, but don't let that just overtake you and you explode, right? That's what you I know that's what you mean. Yes, sir. That's self-control, right? Yes, sir. That's all you saying? Just pointing at it? What do you say about it? Um, I'm just, I'm just trying to say always have self-control when you're mad. Never lash out at someone. Okay, I understand. And you responded to his comment about anger. Use self-control. Very good. Yes, sir. I saw another hand. Yes, ma'am. I was just going to say uh, your faith, your belief. Your training or with your growth. So, so, and be be specific. How? In, in what way? How do you do that? Um, I'll just say with me. I find that praying mm. and just being calm, and talking to God, helps me. Uh, a lot of times, I've gotten better with my temper. Mm -hmm. You know, just asking to help me to control my temper. Mm -hmm. That's, that's awesome. And that, that definitely goes towards to strengthening your character, developing your character, having a strong faith. We are Christians. Right? Uh-oh. We're Christians, so we definitely believe uh, in God. We, we, we accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. We don't necessarily push that on our students, but we do put it in our mission statement. So if anybody goes to our website, they're going to know. Well, those people are they're, they're Christians. So if they're not, and we have some people here who are not Christian. We have some people here who may be atheists. We have some people here who are Muslim. Uh, we have people who are a different faith. We still accept people in, right? Right. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you're not a Christian, ultimately my, my, my hope is that you will become that someday. Correct? Yes, sir. I'm about to get baptized for Sunday. Oh, all right. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Look, I knew his parents when they weren't married, and they were young children, young people. They were children in church, and so I'm glad to see that they're raising you and your siblings up in the same fashion. So, I like to go back to that. We're developing character. It's a consistent thing. It can be prayer. It can be reading. Obviously, reading the Bible, reading other books that self-help books. You guys, there are even books for children that you can read that inspire you that help you get stronger, more knowledgeable, not just reading math stuff all the time, that's good too, but how do I improve myself? Because ultimately, if I'm a teacher, what is my goal? Yes, Christian? To teach your students. That's ultimately, I want to teach them, but what do, they, what do I want to do for them? I, want to help I, want, I like that word. What'd you say? Oh, what did somebody say? Oh, okay, so you said empower them. I want to empower them I thought I heard somebody say help them. Oh, okay. I want to help them. I want to empower them. I really want to change their lives for the better. I don't want to just make money. I don't want to just um, have them learn a form. I want to help them become a better person, somebody who can contribute to society in a positive way. As a teacher, that's my goal. Even when I was at the middle school for a couple years, teaching PE, ultimately what I want to do is when they leave, I want them to be better because of their uh, uh, time.
time with me. If I can't leave them better, then I fail. I want them to be better because of that. So we got to consistently work on our character. Um, I think I'm going to stop there and I'm going to let. What did I say was next? Me. Yeah, you. All right. Master Jones. All right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about leadership. All right. First thing that we need to understand as uh, people who are in a position of leadership, because by reason of your rank, okay, you're in a position of leadership by reason of your rank. But here is the truth. Being in a position of leadership does not make you a leader. Okay? It, you do have the authority of the position, but that doesn't make you a leader. Okay? So there's a difference between a couple of, uh, of words here that I'm going to write down. Manager versus leader. They can both be in the same position. Both of them have gone through the steps to attain a certain position. Do you understand that? In fact, though a leader might be in a lower position than the manager. The manager might be in a higher position than, than the leader. So a person who has a position they could be a leader, but they could also just be a manager because they've attained the position, but they don't necessarily have leadership qualities. Master Jones was just talking about uh, lead some leadership qualities, working on your character. Really, the, the, the difference between a manager and a leader is character. A lot of times, have you ever run across someone that was in a position of leadership. They had, they had acquired the position, but all they did was sort of lord it over people. You know, they just were, I'm in charge here. You can't have this, you can't do this, you can't go there. Uh, what I say goes, right? <laughs> I saw recently um, a uh, reel on Instagram, and it was a person who's in a position of leadership saying, uh, in my position of leadership, I could, with the stroke of my pen, <laughs> with the stroke of my pen, bring up charges on you, and you will have to lose time at work. You would have to hire an attorney to defend yourself. And it doesn't even have to be a big charge. It could be a small, like a misdemeanor. And I could make you embarrassed in front of your family and friends. And then a couple of weeks later, I could drop the charges. Just with the stroke of my pen. Does that sound like a leader or a manager? Yeah. That's a manager. Because a manager says, I'm in charge. A leader says, how can I help you? How can I bring you up, right? So this, it's a difference of character. And we were talking about character. So character in uh, Taekwondo, there's some other things that go with leadership. Number one is a, a leader has to set that good example, right? A manager may not be uh, interested in setting a, an example. Does I, with the stroke of my pen, can put you and your family in dire straits? Does that sound like a person who cares about the example that they're setting? Not at all. Not at all, okay? Uh, so, uh, but a leader is gonna try to set a good example for you. So, as what does that mean for us as Taekwondo instructors? If we wanna be a leader, how are we, how can we set an, a good example? Let's just say, as far as our technique is concerned, how do we set a good example for the people, and we're not just leaders as far as being black belts or senior red belts uh, or red belts, people who are a, 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 want to be an instructor. 
but we have to set a good example in our technique if we want to be an instructor, right? That's even above just, just being a black belt or just being a senior red belt. If I want to actually help somebody to do well, I got to set that good example. How do I do that? Ma'am? Learning the form or whatever it is that we're trying to teach, make sure we know it. Make sure we know it. Make sure we have perfected the technique, right? Because if, uh, if I'm, if I, if Master Jones says to me, can you go back there and teach a uh, roundhouse kick to the white belts? And I say, sure. And then I say, uh, do this. And uh, then, can you show me that again? If he's gonna have a problem uh, with just within a few weeks, <laughs> and can you imagine the problem he's gonna have uh, when they get to green belt and they have to learn jump spinning or roundhouse or, or jump roundhouse because they never learned roundhouse because I, I, I went like this because I didn't perfect my technique. So set a good example. That means that you as the leader have to practice more than the people that you are teaching. You have to perfect your technique more than the people that you are teaching. So I teach a DEF CON class. Do you think I work out less than the people that I teach or more? More. more. So sometimes I don't even work out with them because I already worked out. <laughs> I already did the, the workout. So I work out more than they do. And that's what we have to do as leaders. We have to set that good example. Can you think of something else in Taekwondo that we need to do in order to be a good leader? Sir? To be a more good leader in Taekwondo, I think you should practice, um, in order to be like teaching, you, sh you should um, practice your technique before putting it out into your, stu into your students on the leash. Practice. That's good. So a person who maybe it's a, a manager, they just get the belt and then they don't practice no more. And then they try to get to the next belt and then they don't practice anymore. And then they, you know, oh, the test is coming. You know, so two weeks before the test, they're trying to scramble to remember the stuff that they did, that they haven't practiced in a year, right? So you have to stay consistent, that's correct, okay? Anyone else? What's something else in Taekwondo that you need to do? Sir? Have self-control. Absolutely. You gotta have self-control. <laughs> and you gotta have self-control in a lot of different areas. So we, we always think anger. That's the one that comes up first. Anger is self-control, right? But fear, right? How many of you have ever um, come up against a obstacle to your test? Some people it's board breaking. Some people it's brick breaking. Some people it's uh, forms. People have different kind of challenges. Some people it's acts of kindness. <laughs> they don't want to do the acts of kindness, and uh, and you know that it just blows their mind that they have to do these acts of kindness. So, so and some people it's the paper for when they get up to black belt, they have to write a paper, and they just like in their mind they just go through a meltdown, right? So. You have to do the thing that it takes and you have to put that time and that effort and that energy in. And that makes you a leader because some people are not gonna do it. I cannot tell you how many people got the senior red belt and quit. Can you imagine you walked all the way up to the finish line and refused to cross it out of fear? Fear is a big thing, but what does fear really mean? Everybody I know, you you have to know what fear is. Somebody tell me. What is fear, sir? It's face up. Uh, it's basically scared, like like uh, uh like for your example, I'm basically scared of crossing the finish line because because a lot of people like scolded me yell at me or they don't like me anymore. Mm -hmm. 
for for the finish line thing, I think they're scared of the black belt test. Because people have told them, oh, my black belt test lasted this long or that long, and we had to do this, we had to do that. And so they're afraid, ooh, I can't do it, and so they quit. So, but fear is, what does that say? What does that say? It's like crazy. Right. F-A-L. It's a L. It is a L. There you go. Evident. Evident. Appearing. Real. False evidence appearing real. So, in people's minds, it's a real thing. You know, that black belt test is, oh, it's going to be too hard, I can't do it. Oh. And that, that, what fear does, what fear is, is false evidence appearing real. What fear does is paralyze you. It makes you stop. So we have to learn how to break through. We have to, in our minds, our minds, remember we always say, we train our minds. Mind. Mind. Say it again. Mind, mind, mind. One more time. Mind, mind, mind. So our minds got to be strong enough to break through the fear, to say, I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, this thing is not going to overcome me. I'm going to overcome it. So our mind has to say, that's not real. The best example that we've ever seen, at, at least that I remember, we've ever seen of, of uh, on the movie, was, I don't know if you guys ever saw um, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yes. Right? And they had a big uh, gulf that they had to go through to get something. And it looked like a, just a giant chasm. And they told, they told the, there was a clue about t taking a step or something, right? And so he's at the edge of this thing. And, and it looked like he was just going to fall into an abyss, right? But so he with, just took that step. And when he took the step, a, a, a plank appeared, right? And it was a, it was a big brick uh, concrete plank. So it wasn't gonna fall or anything else like that. But you couldn't see it at all when you were back one step. You had to take a step forward in order for that thing to appear, right? So the fear was, if I take a step forward, I'm going to die, right? But he took the step and found out, but no, there's a solid plank all the way across to where I need to be. And that's really what happens a lot of times when we overcome fear. We just, we find out, no, there's a solid foundation here that this thing was false the whole time. So leaders have to be able to Set the good example by breaking through barriers. So your students, the people that you're setting an example for, see you having uh, challenges. They see you having challenges, and they see you going ahead and continuing despite the challenges, breaking through out of challenges. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. yeah. All right. The other thing I wanted to talk about, I'm gonna, I could talk about leadership all day, but I won't. The other thing I want to talk about is on the mat. As a uh, instructor on the mat, you have to take initiative, okay? As an assistant instructor on the mat, you have to take initiative. You cannot, Christian, come up here for a sec. I need a, I need a helper for, for a sec. Yes, ma'am. If I'm the instructor on the mat, and Christian is my assistant instructor on the mat, and you guys are all the instruct, uh, all the students, and I am here telling you, right foot back, fighting stance, we're gonna do front snap kick, and you know, Hana, and uh, duel, and Christian just stands next to me the whole time. Is he helping? Is, no, he's not helping. He's just he's standing next to me, right? So sometimes we forget as assistants that our job is to take initiative. So what Christian should do 
is go down there with those people. All right. And turn and watch them though. Okay, all right, right foot back by his stance. And Hana. And then, oh, ooh, Miss Jackie is not doing that front snap kick right. So he's gonna take the initiative and go over. <laughs> And he's gonna <laughs> tell her, you know, put your knee up, pull your toes back, right? <laughs> you know, do it, do it like this, right? We have to. That's what we have to do because the instructor, if he goes and he's he's over here talking to Miss Jackie, okay, put your knee up and, and do like that. There could be four other people over there having a problem with front snap kick, right? So you can't be helping everybody at the same time. That's the reason that we have assistance on the floor. Because we can't be everywhere at the same time, right? So our assistants take initiative. They help people, but then they don't do, they don't do some of the things that we as seasoned instructors do. So come over here again, Christian. So we're in push-up position. Push-up position. We're doing push-ups. All right, put your butt way up in the air. And do the push up absolutely wrong. Okay, so, uh, so what our assistants don't do is they don't push their butt down, right? <laughs> okay, all right, now uh, put your uh, behind, put your hips all the way down the ground. All right, do the push up all the way wrong. Another thing that our assistants don't do, but we might do it, but the assistants don't do, is then grab here and pull their butt up, right? <laughs> Okay, so an assistant instructor is not going to lay hands on the student, okay? We're going to have initiative. We might say, lower your behind, lower your behind. Okay, good, nice, straight back. Now go down and push up. Good. All right, go down, push up. Very good, excellent. All right, so they may do that, but what they're not going to do is take that butt and push it down, right? And they're not going to grab their belt grab and pull it up, right? Mm -hmm. They may have seen us do it. We're sorry. That's a bad example we said. We're not going to do it anymore. Because <laughs> we don't want them to do it. All right, sir. Thank you so Good much. Job, Appreciate it. Good job. Thank you. Good job. So we want to have initiative, but we don't want to over, or we don't want to uh, do things that, that could alienate the students who don't even know you, right? You haven't been in front of the class for very long or anything. And uh, so we don't want to do those kind of things. But what we do want to do is make sure that we're rotating around the room and looking for someone to help. Okay? Does that make sense, guys? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma All right. So that's what, that's what I want to talk about sir, as far as initiatives. Okay. Aaliyah, you're up. Okay. I'm going to talk a little bit about patience, but I just wanted to off what you said a little bit on contact. Yeah. I was about to speak up a little bit. Uh, so I talked about <laughs> <laughs> no nobody wanted to call. So we'll be still cold. Yeah. Um, no, we don't want her to spray us either. <laughs> so in some cases you will have to maybe need to touch or show them physically. Some kids just do things really, 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 really wrong. And, or maybe you're telling them to switch feet and they're just standing there. And even if you show them they're not copying, in that case, you want to ask them first. Can I, can I touch you? Can I move your leg? Can I move your arm? Is it okay if I move your arm? Is it okay if I touch your shoulders? Whatever. And then they'll either say yeah or they'll say no. And if they say no, then you just... Oh, okay, and you keep trying to show them, but yeah, just making sure that you are checking everybody's boundaries. You're not overcrossing or stepping people's boundaries. That's how we make people more comfortable with us, anyways. When we ask first, um, and then especially for the little children, most times you are gonna have to physically show them. So I always. Always ask them first until I've known them for a while and they, they don't really care anymore. But still, sometimes I'll ask them first just so that they can answer yes or no. They're okay with it. Make sure everybody's comfortable in what's going on. Okay, but my topic is patience. Okay. 
And um, I'm going to keep it in focused on the little kids. But this also goes for all age groups. The, uh, the 7, 8, 9, 10 year olds. I see you guys as age group, but you're higher rank, right? So you have more self-control than maybe the beginners, right? They're going to be a little bit all over the place, a little bit out of control. Maybe not focused all the time. The thing, yes? Go. The thing that tends to happen, um, we can get frustrated showing somebody something over and over again. They're still doing it wrong. And then the kid is also getting frustrated with you. And so we're not really getting anywhere. So my, for me, patience is stopping and trying to reevaluate how I'm teaching it. Because if I am getting frustrated and you're getting frustrated and I'm the teacher, then I'm doing something wrong. So I'm going to take a step back and I'm going to try and figure out a new angle that I can teach us or show you. There's lots of different ways you can teach something, right? And then um, that also applies if the kid just isn't paying any attention. They're a little bit absent-minded. I would give them a couple of tries, but if they're really not focused at all, I'm just gonna put them to the side for a minute rather than let myself get frustrated with them. And then when they're ready, they'll come up and we'll try. For the older kids, probably they'll get some push-ups because they need to learn a lot and pay attention. But for the little eagles, I'm gonna have them try it a couple of times. If they're totally out of it, I'm gonna stop because next thing I know I'm getting frustrated and then it kind of interrupts the whole class. I try not to put too much focus on whoever is being disruptive. They tend to do better when the rest of the class is running well. Okay? Mm -hmm. I just feel like don't give all your attention to the disruptors. <laughs> I feel like you, yeah. You don't want to do that no matter what, because they're going to distract. You look at them and everybody's looking at them. And then the ones who want to act like that but are using their self-control are going to start acting like that and start talking again. So, yeah. Don't put your attention on the disruptors. Um, as far as helping and assisting goes, when trying to demonstrate a technique, for little eagles, let's say you want them to just do a jab. What would be the first step? You can see me like go right after. What would be the first step? I'm saying like this. You want to teach me how to do a jab. What's the first thing I have to do? What? You have to you, the first thing you have to do is get like, the train passed as you said it, or the bus I didn't hear you. What did you say? We're correct, say it again. Um, you have to show them what stance you're supposed to be in and proper stance, okay? So fighting stance. So I'm gonna tell them to do what? Something. Um, right leg back. Right leg back, okay. And then what? What's next? Yes. And then and then throw a punch with your leaning hand. Okay, right leg back and then throw a punch. With your front hand. Was that correct? No. No? So we skipped something. So what comes up before that? Oh, hands up. Okay. And then, and then front arm pointed towards. Okay. Is that a punch? No. No, it's closed. You gotta close your hands, right? Yes. So you have to break things down step by step by step by step by step to the smallest little baby details because by the time they're doing it, if you miss any of those steps, they're gonna, they're either gonna do it wrong or end up hurting themselves. Little kids love to hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. So you really have to make sure you're doing their technique correctly. If I teach a, a three-year-old how to do a front snap kick, but I don't tell them that they have to make sure their foot is flat, they're gonna end up going up to one of these and crunching their toes on it. And then they're gonna come to me crying and I'm gonna be like, oh, that's my fault, right? Because I taught it to him wrong. So you have to say each and every step, 
first thing I would teach is pull your foot back. That's step one for you. Then the next thing I'm going to teach, we're hitting with this part of the foot, okay? Then the next step I would say is before you kick, you're gonna get in your fighting stance, one foot back, hands up, and we tap our leg that we're kicking with. I have them say which one it is. Then we go through the steps of the actual kick, right? Knee up, pull your toes back, kick with the bottom of the foot and bring it back. Then you step down. You have to go through every single step slowly because they're not gonna understand it otherwise, okay? That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that, uh, that I did when I taught Philip Needle, and I, even when I taught the, uh, the beginner children's classes, every day at the beginning when we used to, we, um, we bowed in, first few things that we did was hands in the air, in a straight a proper fist, because if they are punching like this, and I said, arm straight out, that's a five step. Because if they're not, if you're not doing the punch correctly, you're gonna be in big trouble when you get up to break board uh, situation. Yes, so um, yeah, that's it. The other thing is, you know, when we say, put your hands back in a fist, they're not doing a proper fist. And they'll do anything, any kind of fist. I've seen that, I've seen this, I've seen So you, that's one thing that you really want to make sure. And, and someone else gave me a piece of advice. Because you do get frustrated if you're trying to tell somebody how to do something. And what they said was, make yours look like mine. <laughs> make your fist look like mine. Right? And then, for some reason, that clicks with children. So then, all of a sudden, your fist goes to here. Or I go like this, I say hands open, and then I say fingers down, and then I say thumbs on top. And that works. But I'm saying it like you're folding a piece of paper, step by step, okay? Everything has to be uh, step by step by step. Like you're teaching a baby how to use the bathroom by themselves. Oh, no. They have to do everything or else they'll come back and poop on you, right? Oh, that's no. Scary. Quit picking your nose. Go get some tissue. Oh, man. Go on. Who are you talking to? It's Tyler. Oh. Go get some tissue, brother. Yeah, I, no. I can't. I can't take it. I don't want anybody seeing you. Go. Go <laughs> <laughs> get some tissues. No. explain and teach a basic kick to a white belt or a little eagle because it's the same it's a lot of difficulty they don't know how to do it at all cameras on speak loud oh i didn't know you were recording me <laughs> uh, okay um i think that was my main point to do that thing, uh, just have them doing something healthy. We need to do jumping jacks, run a couple laps, do some push-ups, yeah, ask some questions, but I um, don't want the kids to just be standing around uh, waiting for the main instructor to come back. That's why you guys are assistants, so that if necessary, if the teacher has to run off the mat, somebody can quick take over and do something, even if it's not what even if it's not what I was doing or what Master Jones was doing, having them practice something so that they're not just waiting around. And that's about it, I think. Can you think, ask if there are any questions? Are there any questions? <laughs> Ian. Yes. Um, uh, what, do you, what happens if you like, if you like not on time and 
If you're not on time for helping, oh, I probably won't care at all, uh, personally. I don't know about them, but maybe they'll give you push-ups. You might not get credit for... Oh, you might not be able to sign in, so you that might be it. for your whole 45 minutes to get to it. Maureen? So, like, if you come and you only have 20 minutes late, I can't give you the whole 45. But if you come, like, five minutes late, then that's it. But we don't want to be late, right? Yeah. Okay. But it's not... You don't drive, though, so... Yeah, yeah and, and here's a different sign. If you're late because your mom is saying, time, let's go, and you're dragging your feet, and you're taking your time, yeah. then that's your fault. But if you're late because your parent has something and they couldn't get you here on time, that's not your fault, right? right. So it's just, you gotta be honest, though. Integrity is important. That's important. Yeah. Um, 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 one of the reasons why I are not late is because you're doing this and your parents are doing this and by the time that you are attack one, those are already over. So again, yeah. was it because you were not on time and ready? No, or was I'm not trying to say that. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say what if the parents and the kids were doing something on their own instead of just trying to get ready. Or if they're both of them. Oh, everybody's late. <laughs> still, you're still That's late. Who are you? Yeah. <laughs> you want, you That's good you. I have to go. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you contributed. You contributed to our response. I have to. Okay. 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 Dial in questions about lateness. You guys questions about teaching or helping you teach. No. Now we can ask so just a um, question, just general. Say if you tell someone to take over the students and going to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And someone outranks you come in and say, I'm taking over the class. Mm -hmm. And even you say, well, she told me to do this. So do you step back or do you do? Um, I would go ahead and step let back. them do it. Mm -hmm. I would also probably tell them whatever we were doing mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. And then you just, you're still the one that just tells them out. So yeah, I mean, it's easier for you if you're set like you know somebody comes up to help you out you just tell them what i was doing before i left and then they'll they should pick up where i left off okay. all right good job good job okay so i just want to uh this is mostly for my junior leaders um so you guys have to teach class and you're the same age as the kids in the class the white and yellow belts um and sometimes you might run into either they're not listening because they're the same age or you might uh get into conversations with them um, so you guys want to make sure one you are higher rank so you don't need to be playing around with them And I'm not saying you guys I'm just seeing what I've observed sometimes so I don't want to be playing around or getting into a back and forth with them Does that make sense? Because yeah. they don't know the level of respect yet And so that doesn't mean that you have to do go into the manager. I'm in charge type situation. You're just um, we're not talking right now, you need to be listening, or we're not talking right now, we're doing the technique, and then you just redirect it into the technique, show me your technique. If they're really not listening, that's when you're gonna like, um, maybe I need to go get Master Jones. Does that make sense? Because then Master Jones or Mr. RJ or I will now back you up and be like, hey, your senior belt lets you know you're supposed to do this, how come you're not doing it? And then that's now reinforcing your rank. Does that make sense? So you don't want to get caught into having conversations and playing with them during class. Outside of class, you guys can hang out and talk. That's a little bit different. But still remember, no chasing, no running around, not doing stuff that they want to do that you know you're not supposed to do. Does that make sense to you guys? Because you guys have to be a good example. And I'm only saying that because on Thursday... And Gonzalo wasn't doing anything wrong, but I heard how the kids were trying to talk to him and goad him into something, and he wasn't calling for it. So I'm, I'm hearing how they're trying to do that, and how they're like, mm, because he's the same age or he's shorter than them. But Gonzalo was not falling for that. So I just wanted to make sure you guys remember basically who you are. 
you've already been there before. So always going back to set and exit example, you don't have to be bossy, right? But you do have to make sure that you establish that you are the assistant, you do know what you're doing, and try to do what's called a redirect, get their attention back into what they're supposed to be doing in class. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, then going for like the standing around, make sure you don't stand in groups with each other, spread out on the floor. So one of you can be closer to the main instructor, the other ones are in the group, showing what we're supposed to be doing properly. Make sure you put your foot like this, showing your push-ups correctly, but never all standing in a group. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, sir. Um, no, I wanted to ask a question. Um, what was the role of gifts are on senior push-ups? That's a good question. No. I was going to say, black belts are more the ones giving push-ups. Red belts and senior red belts need to be more on the observe and report, like security guards. Um, but you can let them know, hey, you're not supposed to be doing that. You're going to stop before you get in trouble. And that's what Joan's going to see you and you're going to have push-ups. You know, so that's giving them the warning. Hey, that Master Jones, see you doing that, you're going to get push-ups. You understand? And then when you do see people doing stuff that they're really, really not supposed to be doing, then you can either give them the warning. Hey, you guys better stop before you get in trouble. Or if they don't listen at that point, then you can go get a black belt. Okay? But yeah, you guys aren't giving push-ups out yet. Um, younger black belts use wisdom i'd more so like when you guys are giving like green and blue belts push-ups because they know better red belts push-ups they know better at this point you understand um and then trying to develop a rapport with the white and yellow belts so giving them warnings letting them know because they might not know that they're not supposed to be doing that and you're not supposed to be doing that and we're not supposed to be running you're not supposed to run through school let's walk but make sure you still sound like you don't have to be like hey walk like being heck of bossy bossy that's not your job okay styles and um 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 what if even though that you're not allowed to uh like to let people know or give them push up oh but what if like a student just kicked you on purpose like what do you do in that situation and not supposed to give them push up well, like I said, you can definitely vocalize, right? I need you to be able to vocalize anyway. If somebody did that to you outside of Taekwondo. So, you know, letting them know, hey, don't do that. Don't kick me like that um, or block it or move or whatever. But um, again, go report it. Go let the, if they are like still trying to hit you after and so saying, oh my bad, I shouldn't be playing like that. Then yeah, you need to go get your instructor. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's a definite no no, right? No horseplay. And if somebody is, if you're not even, if you're not on the mat or whatever, and somebody's in the back and they're kicking you, that's what we call horseplay. And that's something that's against the, the Dojang rules. So if they don't respond to your, hey, we're, you're not supposed to be doing that, we don't do that, um, immediately you need to go uh, report that. We need to stop that. That's not something that people should be doing and getting away with in the, in the dojo. You can't not do that. But again, we have to make sure we're following rules, okay? So one of the rules in the dojang is there is no horseplay um, in the dojang. I don't know if it says without instructor consent, but what, this is a place for serious-minded students. So if you guys come in here and you guys are horse playing and running and wrestling and stuff like that, then why in the world can't the white and yellow belts do it? Oh. You understand? So you can't be a horse playing and acting goofy and stuff like that. And I don't even say acting goofy. You can't horse play and then go tell on somebody else for horse playing the next day. Okay? So... You know, when, if you guys want to play, you have to ask. And then a black belt needs to come back there and be watching to make sure it doesn't get out of control. You guys, and some of you are good about asking, can we go in the back and play? And then other times, you, your classmates will get push-ups because they're not because they are horse playing and they know they're not supposed to. 
So make sure we're always like we know our rule book, we know the rules and regulations, and if you know the rules, then most likely you're not going to break them. So make sure you know your rules, um, know your yellow belt stuff, because that's more rules, um, so that you can be that good example. I think Christian was next on him. Christian? So what about like junior black belts? Are they closer to the senior belt or like actual black belts? You're a black belt. I know. Junior black, junior black belts are black belts. They just have not broken a brick yet. But I, again, I, I, it's always, I'm always looking at how you, how is your example? If you're a junior black belt who still acts like a colored belt, then you cannot give out push-ups because you're more being a manager than a leader. Okay, so then I will take away your ability to give out any type of push-ups whatsoever or to help until you become mature. Okay, uh, Zion. Um, so when you said that if we if we're supposed to have this instance, then the next day we take away as a place. And you say why don't you tell me to go one place? And we said what you said. Do you think that we talk we're talking smart, like backhanded, or no? Mm, no, but I won't be happy with you for horse playing in the first place. Okay. So, um, and then a lot of times talking smart also is your tone of voice. Like, how are you talking to me? Or how are you moving your body? That can, that can come off. You have to be careful of how you even move your body when you're talking to your superiors. If you're going like this or like this, that looks like an attitude, right? But if you look them in their eye and you have an even tone, oh, well, I didn't feel comfortable telling them that because I was actually doing the same thing yesterday. That's a different, that's a good tone of voice other than, just make, just check yourself. How are you responding to people, okay? Because if you respond and if you sound like you have an edge or you look kind of like you're looking off to the side, sometimes when kids look to the side, to me that looks like you're rolling your eyes. And then it's like, oh, I wasn't. Well, it looked like it. So look, at, look people in their eye and talk to them, okay? And then um, that'll help to control whether it sounds like an attitude or not. But always, like we said earlier, check yourself, take an inventory of yourself. How do I behave? Can I really talk to somebody about their behavior if I'm doing the same thing? That's called being a hypocrite, right? So we can't be hypocrites. We have to make sure that we are doing what we expect other people to do. Okay? Yes, Tyler. Um, if a lot of a student, a lot of a student uh, lied to you, but then you found out two days later, what would you do? I usually have a conference. Um, usually have, if I usually have a conference, I'd like to have their parents involved so we can talk about it as a family. And then they usually get some consequences for that. Or if I don't have, if I don't do that, I let the masters know so that they're aware. And then they, they can pay attention to said student, um, especially the students not in my class. So I let their teacher know. I think that's it that I have to go right now. Are you guys going to talk about praise for us, Brady? We're going to do that on the next week. All right. So that's good stuff, you guys. You guys have learned some good stuff? Yes, yes sir. sir. Uh, Instruct. Oh, what? Is it recording or something? No, sir. Oh. So instructor training is not just an hour and a half. This is an ongoing process. Um, we've been to instructor training classes that were eight hours, mm -hmm. two days. So this is just the, the beginning of it. There's a couple people who are not here who should be here. Or maybe they can see this, or maybe you can do another one for them, um, for the ones who have actually been on the mat a lot helping. Uh, but glad to have you guys here. <clears throat> another thing that's important is presentation, right? You're stepping out in front of people. Um, you want to make sure that your uniform is neat and pressed. That's one of the rules anyway. Um, before anybody joins class, your uniform is neat and clean at all times. It doesn't stink, all that stuff. Well, for us, as we're instructors, it's even more important. Your uniform, when it starts off, it has to be nice and clean and sharp, or uh, whether it's a T-shirt or not. Ms. Leah has a T-shirt on today. Uh, the T-shirt, I've been getting on them a lot. And, and so what I had to go do is go buy new shirts. Right, because some of the shirts were getting old and raggedy and um, the logo was wearing off, so I went and bought everybody new shirts. What well, that means, I don't want to see old shirts anymore. Um, 
uniforms have to be neat and clean, um, smelling good, right? So you can't wear the same uniform, guys, over and over and over. You have to wash it. So as an instructor, it's always a good idea to have more than one uniform. Um, your belts, this is big. Um, belts, ha I even, some of them black belts not, I get on them, your belt is not tied correctly. What? They didn't even realize it because they didn't take the time. Sometimes I see belts like this in the back, right? We see that a lot from, from um, white and yellow belts and all that, but black belt at this level, our belt should be overlapping all the way around to the front and should it be even or uneven? Even. Have you ever seen my belt like this? No. no. You never will either. <laughs> you never will. Never yeah, step. Yeah. You must yeah, have had a dream and it was somebody else. Yeah, it, was it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Styles. You, you seem like you're assured of this, so I'm not going to argue the point with you. <laughs> but, but we want your, your full uniform, your belt. Um, well, I'm the only one that has a beard. Clean shaven hair is, is, is well kept. Um, all of those things are important because you are presenting yourself, you're presenting the school, and you're representing us as, as owners. You're representing us when you step on the mat in front of, even, I'm talking assistants right now too, even though when we bow, because when we bow in, we all line up together, so all eyes on us. When we bow out, all eyes on us. So it's very important that we take time to make sure that we're neat and we're clean and we're sharp. But for one thing, that's going to help the students want to emulate that, right? She was just talking about, or you just saying a good way to do that is probably 30 more minutes. Um, a good way to show them to do it, and they do it. They copy you. Well, that's the same thing here. We want them to copy us looking good. So now, I, I, you know, I don't never see it here at the school, but when I was working at the school where Jeremiah goes, you know, the boys are walking around with their pants down over their butt. I know you probably see it at your school, high school. And they think that, I don't, they think it's cool. I have the girls like that. You don't know? To, to, it's the weirdest thing to me. Now I'm old. I'm, I'm really old. It's because they want us to see their epic. Oh, they're no, shorts. So long. Well, oh, no. well. Oh, my God. So it came out in my era. And then we were telling them, like, pull your pants we up. We told them that. And they were so weird. They grow out of it, though. Really? Yeah, they, like, now it's just a little tiny bit. Well, they still doing it in middle school. Yeah. 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 I see it. Like, 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 I see yeah, so, so I don't, I don't know, you know, the presentation. And I don't, I don't know if they're trying to impress the girls because they don't act like it. Um, and, and if they actually know the truth behind that, it, that's a prison thing. Yeah, that's something that came from the prison. And that's not you weren't trying to impress girls. Yeah, so, but the whole point is that presentation. That's that's not something that you want to emulate. You want to emulate something where a person is neat. Young man, when you get older and you get ready to go apply for college or apply for a job or uh, go somewhere to start your business, you want to look sharp, you want to look clean, um, you want to go impress the person who you're, hey, I, I would like to work for you, I think I can make your company better, and this is why. Boom, 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 boom. So that same thing applies with us here. We always want to make sure everything is sharp. Before you step on the mat, look at yourself, check yourself. Make sure my pants are not dirty. If my pants are dirty, I gotta go change them. Yes, Put something else on so that I look good in front of my students. Mm -hmm. um, something that Aaliyah, no, who was it? Aisha was just talking. Miss Aisha was just talking about it. Um, when we're talking about when we're on the mat. Oh, actually, all of them kind of touched on this. Um, my eyes are critical. Um, as a head instructor, I always want to position myself where I can see the whole class. And lately, we've been having classes up to numbers of 30 and 30 plus. So that's a lot of people, children. 
Um, adult class is, at night has been somewhere around 20 sometimes. That's a lot, but they're older, so you're not as concerned. Well, you are concerned uh, because you don't know everybody. And some people do some weird stuff, so you got to be watching. But the main point is you always have to position yourself to where you can see everything from this corner, that corner, to that corner. I'm in a corner. Or if I'm in the middle, I can see here to there and back. If I'm a, if, a, uh, if it's an assistant, then this is what Master Jones was saying, I don't need my assistant standing right next to me. Now we have the same vision. I need my assistant maybe where the tree is or maybe where Christian is or where Yaya is. So now we are seeing, if I take my eye off of here, they're seeing what's going on over there. We have two pair of eyes. Sometimes I have three or four assistants and depending on where the class, the class is, and none of you have been in that class. And I'll have, let me see this. This is me up in the front and I'll have three or four people standing right here. And all the students are here. We're all standing, and I'm talking about during class, not during violin, and we're all standing in the same area and I have to say, get away from me. And I said, <laughs> I said under my voice so everybody doesn't hear me, but I'm like, go, walk around, spread away, spread out. Initiative. So, yeah, that's what she was talking about, initiative. And we have to train to make sure now you understand that. But the whole goal is, when we have more than one person on the mat, is that we're not in the same area. We begin to spread out. So let's, let's practice. You want to add something to that? No, I was oh. just... So let's practice that. Everybody come out here for yes, me. Yes, sir. So, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you stand up and stretch your legs? Anyway? I see that to all men. Huh? Oh my walk in between. I don't know if you noticed when Master Jones was, she was doing her presentation. I got up to get some water. What did I do? I walked behind her. I could have walked in front of her just like people do all the time. And then you guys would have been distracted from what she's saying. So I walked behind her. You still saw me, but hopefully it wasn't as big a distraction as it could be. So if you're an instructor, don't walk in front of the instructor and the students go behind to go to where you are. You going back to where Miss Alita is. Oh, that was nice. Found there's some people back there that need help. Go, go help them. Oh, he went that way. I thought you were going to go this way, but that was good. Okay, so making sure that we don't distract from the main voice, whatever the main voice is. The main voice might be Christian. Christian, come up. Be the main voice. Sir. Tell them to do something. So, first half kick. Okay. Ready? One, seven, two, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> he said it under his voice too that was cool he said get away from me now. so this is what Master Jones was saying earlier I'm going to come back here so three one two three alright stop uh, okay so you three ladies oh, are almost black girls you get up there and do the same thing Oh, yes, okay, since you're in the middle, you be the head instructor. Come back here, Chris. Sir. Go up there. Go up there. Walk straight up. Walk straight up. Walk straight up. <laughs> and then, now you guys, you're the head instructor. They're assisting you, so let's go. Oh, I'm the head instructor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to do uh, first half kick. Is it Miss Ma'am? Yeah. yeah. Um, right leg back, fighting stance. Huh. <laughs> okay. Ready? Stop for a second. Hi. So, Jackie, I'm not sure where you, because you're hiding behind the pole. So, you might want to position Keep yourself, up. right, more where, okay. Keep coming. Keep coming. All right. You can always be behind. Okay. Keep going. Okay. So, she's behind, and you should probably be on this side right here, because now you guys have to be across the, you're like looking at everybody on this side, and she's looking at everybody on that side. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because I don't want you both to be behind. I need you guys to be kind of like, so, the layers. So it's pretty much if someone sees you going this way, the other person should go the other way then? Yeah. Okay. It's kind of like in, you think about in judging in a tournament. Um, if me and, me, and me and Zion are judges and, and uh, Styles is the center judge, when I go this way, we kind of stay opposite each other. Go back to where you were. So, so you stay this out. That fly just likes you. Now you go that way. You go that way, Zion. And I'm going this way. So we stay opposite of each other. Okay. Oh, I, oh, I thought you were a judge. Oh, oh wait, okay. what? <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are we continuing? Just a few more. Okay. Um, four. 
Four. Okay, thank you. Ready? <laughs> Go. Hey! Ready? Go. Hey! Ready? Go. Hey! Switch feet. Yes, ma'am! Ready? Go. Hey! Ready? Go. Hey! All right, ready? Go. Hey! All right, come to attention. Man. All right, good job, good job. Uh, Styles, go up there. Sign, go, sign, go. Yes, sir. Styles ran right to the middle. Okay. Okay, okay uh, we're going to do uh, jab. Hit jab cross. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One. Okay. Yeah, do the step by step. Uh, okay. First, be in fighting stance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I don't know what that is, sir. What's a fighting stance? He's new. <laughs> a fighting stance is a stance that is going to prepare you for fighting. So oh, okay. Uh, so uh, so put your hands up. Just tell him to get away from you. Say, get away from me. What? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so over there. So one thing happened while you were talking. Come back over there. You decided, because he wasn't getting his point across, you decided to help him. So you started talking too. And that's another no-no for all of us. When the head instructor, whoever it is at the time, is doing the talking, no other instructor should be talking at the same time. Yes, now, yes, Styles will say something like, try to correct. Um, what? Yeah, just like you were doing. Explain jab cross. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Okay, so now you're done. Hmm? And when he's done, may I add something? May I add something? Can I say something also? So letting the head instructor know that I have a point that I need to make. But I'm not going to interrupt that head instructor. I'm going to wait till he's done or she's done or whatever. And once she's done, then I'll say, let me ask something as well. And then you can, you can talk. Because everybody, all the instructors and assistants also have good stuff to say. But you can't do it at the same time. Because again, what does that become? You okay. said it. Distraction. A distraction. Uh -huh. And that happens a lot. I hear, I'll be upstairs and I hear people talking at the same time. I don't want that. I want one person to make an explanation then the other person can add when they're done. Yes, if you can't get your point across to him, just stop trying and just tell him, okay? You don't have to come all the way up to me to tell me I did too many punches, right? You just say, just two punches while looking at me. You know, two, and then I'll be like, oh, okay. Because I'm tend to be a little kid, but I'm not a four-year-old little kid. So if you tell me to do two, I'll do two. I'm just not paying attention back there. Right? Okay. If he's not understanding what you're saying, then you guys are just standing up here talking. And then I'm going to start dancing. Okay? 
Oh my God! Again. Oh my Lord! All right, uh, let's see. Three more. Three more. Three more. Come on, let's go. Yep, there, Kristen. Yep, there, Barb. Come on, somebody else. One of y'all. I go back. Wasn't Christian in the middle already? No. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. We're gonna go to Judy. We're going to go, we're just going to dance. Okay, body stance. Body stance. Oh, right, 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 right foot back, front foot forward. You have to adjust the dance. Yep. When you guys are teaching body stance, you actually have to go on the wrong side. Because if you don't, I'm going to copy you and I'm going to put my left foot back. Because I don't know my left and my right. So you go put your left foot back and we're going to mirror you. And we'll be on the correct side. Okay, try it again. Go to right foot back. Ready? Go. Hi. Make sure the hand that's the hand that matches the leg is in front. That's the jab. And the hand in the back is across. Okay? For the jab, we're gonna punch straight to the middle. Okay? Okay. Ready? One. Hey! Hey! Two. Hey! hey. And do it with power. Try to make it snap. Okay. Yes, sir. Good. Yeah. He said yes, sir. <laughs> Three. Hey. hey. Four. Hey. Make sure it's full extension. Okay. Five. Hey. So treat. Yes, sir. All right, that's good. Good job. Good job. Three more. Somebody new in the middle. Go, 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 go. Three more. Oh, oh. Somebody that just went up there. Christian, you come out. Somebody new. Three more. All right, let's go. We're going to get into a heart stance. So we're heart stance. It's going to do like this. Put your hands um, to your belt. So the both your hands are going to be together. So heart stance. Fire. Always tell them to go. Say, so ready, go. Okay, ready, go. So we're going to just punch. So we're one, two. We're just going to do one, two. So, okay, so we're going to get our right hand, and we're going to start with our right hand first. Go one, two. Ready? Let's go. One, two. Hey! hey. Every time on the second one, we're going to key out. Ready? Hey! hey. One more time. Ready? One, two. Hey! 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 hey. hey. So now we're going to get back into the second. Okay, so let's try. Let's try one more time. Okay, thank you. Okay, ready? Let's try one more time. Ready? Let's go. One, two. Hey! hey. Oh, yeah. Three and two. I'm sure it's two, ma'am. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. Ready? Let's do it one more time, please. This is going to be our last time. This is be our best one. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Ready? Let's go. Hey! All right. Good okay. job. Get ready. Get ready. Three more. Three more. Let's go. Somebody hasn't been in the middle yet. All right. So what I heard Miss Aisha say is mirroring. Making sure you're mirroring your students. So you're in the front of them. You have to be opposite of them. All right. That's, that's critical to remember that. And I heard Master Jones say, and this is important. We should have said it earlier. Tell your students what they're going to do or what you want them to do. You can even show them what you want them to do and then tell them to do it. All right, so that, that means we're orderly. Um, they, they're following instructions. They're following orders. Stop looking at your belt as a leader. Why? Why fault? Thank you. I'm talking about your belt and you're talking about a fly. All right, go on. Right foot back. Right foot back. That's your left foot. Yeah. So you do the opposite. Thank you. Uh, 
I mean, that's our left foot, so you want to see our right foot. I would like to see your, your first pair of skates. You picked the sword one for yourself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have one for me. <laughs> Go for it. Teach us how to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. Wow. Let's go. You're going to see. Yeah. This, is, this is how you do double press your feet. This? Which part of my foot, yeah. sir? Oh, okay. Oh, my the heel? Heel? Okay, heel? No, no, no. no. Oh, this part or this part or this part? Uh, right here. In the, the middle. Man. Just, just this this middle. No, you guys. I never told arch. you that. I never told you that. Oh, no. no. Ball, ball of your foot. 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 Ball of your Okay, so this is good because this can happen in a class, especially a class of uh, beginners. Everybody relax. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. How do you gain control back when it seems like you've lost control of a class? It's clap. Shish might happen. Focus Anchor clap. Point. Focus mm -hmm. clap. What else? What? Quite, um, That's quite what you do in school? Or, 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 or basically. Just show, show, show me one. That's a focus anchor. All, right. Every, all the students go, okay, saying. quiet. What else? Sometimes you can just get quiet as a leader. Hmm? As quiet as a person, just as a leader, you can get quiet. Because somewhere along the line, they'll pay attention as quiet. Oh, that you're quiet. I got yes. you. Okay. What else? Christian. You could, you could like tell, you could like tell them by silence or something. Okay, that's kind of like the sauce. Like, or you could yell, yeah, push up position. There you go. All right. <laughs> Well, Push-up position is another one. Sometimes take a knee. Eyes on me. What's that one you say? All eyes on who? All, All eyes on you. So anchoring, when this class seems like it's getting out of control, all, everybody, all the kids, not just kids, adults. This seems like you. Right? And so, yeah, that's another one too. So being able to get them back under control is important because it's going to happen to everybody. Now, is that the assistant's job to do that or the head instructor? My head job. Instructor. Head, head instructor. instructor. Right. So the assistants can still go, hey, shh, shh, shh. But the head instructor, when you see everything's getting out of control, at that point, you have to anchor everybody back, whether it be push-up position, take a knee, or whatever it is. Okay? All right. One more. Good job, sir. One more. Somebody hasn't been center yet. I'm being side. I just go straight. <laughs> Son, you didn't get to do it, huh? No. All right, we'll do two more. <laughs> Go, ma'am. All right, guys, we're going to do a back fist with your lead hand. So, right leg back. Oh, you guys need to Unless you want that to happen. We all all. <laughs> <see it>. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right leg back. But I put my, I was trying to remember what you said, but I put my left. Okay. And then, hands up, lead hand, back. Ready? Go. One, two. Okay. It's too far. Just straight. Just Again. Three, four. Okay. All right, not bad, not bad. It's all right, get up there. Hassan, this goes for this goes for all of us. Um, strong presence, strong.
straw, so it goes into the presentation I was talking about, but it also goes into, in the military, they call it command presence. Strong voice, head up, shoulders up, body strong, so that when you're giving somebody a command, they want to follow it. But if you're like hesitating, you're kind of whispering, you're talking kind of soft, nobody's gonna want it. They don't see leadership in that. So you have to be, now that's a strong stance right now. You can be a little stronger, but you can start there. You can start there and then give your command, but you have to do it with a strong voice. So try that again. Right leg back. Can you go stronger? Like you're yelling. <laughs> do it again. Go back. Like, speak up. I know he can do loud. Um, right leg back. Your voice went down again. We're going to do jump side kicks with your right leg. Switch. Um, it's all going to be quiet. So you're talking like this. You're all talking like this. All right. So bass in your voice is like this. It's not yelling. Okay. Can you do that? Let me hear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jump side kick with your right leg. How do I do that? That's good. That's good. Good job. Good job. All right, last one, Miss Carolyn. I think everybody else got the center, right? Did you center? Oh, you were first. You are on your confidence. Sometimes people like this. You have confidence. All right. Body stance. Even if they can hear you. What? If you go to fighting stance, and I say fighting stance, what is your motion? Do it. Fighting stance. Everybody in slow motion went to fighting stance. Versus when your teacher says it nice and light, mm, loud. Fighting stance! Hey! You guys key off just off of right. me saying it louder. So your energy is going to be reflecting in your students. That's what Max was talking about. So if we're like, the students are either going to be not paying attention or the whole class is going to be like, and you're going to be like, why are you guys not trying? But it's because they're modeling your own energy. Okay? Just keep up that. your energy, you keep up your volume. If you want to teach somebody something hard and complicated, you should already know how you're going to explain it before you start. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma a jump side kick or a jump front snap is hard to teach, right? Let's see. How would I break down a jump front snap kick? Step one, you're just going to bring your foot up, okay? This is a switch kick, so I'm jumping off of my back leg. I'm going to bend, 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 bend. Okay? When I jump off of this foot, I'm going to kick with it, too. So I'm saying a lot of stuff before we even do anything, right? Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to put my foot back down after I explain all that. And then I'm going to show you how to do it. So then after I tell you, I'm going to say, now watch me do it. I'm going to bring my foot up, I'm gonna bend my knee. Then I'm going to jump off of it, and I'm going to do a front snap kick with this leg. Bang. I switch sides. Then from there, they already know how to do a front snap kick. Then you can try it. Then we can move into them attempting, but we still are attempting it slow. We don't just say, go. We go, okay, step one, knee up. Step two, bend that other leg. Step three, jump. And then we see if we get the jump, then we see if we get the kick. Don't rush it, especially the more complicated it is, right? Still Yes? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma ma very good. Good job. Good job. Okay. So we covered a few things today. What were some of the topics? What did we start off with? Sorry. What We started off with what is um, ten. <laughs> no, he said what is something and he said. What? Somebody help me. Punctuality. 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 All right. So being on time, being early. That's very important for instructors. What was the other thing we talked Yes, stop. Initiative, sir. Take an initiative. Don't just stand there like next to the main instructor. Move around, engage. But along with initiative, not over-talking the main instructor, right? 
If you have something to add to that, wait to the opportunity to do it. What else? Yes, sir. A manager and a leader. And and that's not putting down the position of manager. Go, you know, businesses can't run without managers, but being a leader is different, right? There's a whole lot of things that encompass that. Setting an example, all of that stuff that goes along with it. What else? Authority. Authority? Okay. So proper uh, how how would I word that? Huh? Well, but utilize, so when you become a black belt and then when the next level is an assistant instructor, now you, you have authority that's passed through me, through Master Jones, through Miss Aisha, pass it on down, right? So you can act on certain things. Like I just said, not push-ups yet, um, just because we, we go to and continue to work toward that. But there's other things you can do because I give you that authority. You're my eyes when I'm not there. Something happened in the locker room last week. I wasn't in there. None of the instructors were in there. Something happened. Whoever was in there should have been able to use that authority. Say, hey, you guys, cut this out. I'm going to tell Master. I'm going to tell Master. I'm going to. I'm going to get whoever. That'd be acting on that authority. Okay. So that's that's a good. What else? Yes, ma'am. Uh, representing the instructor at our school properly in the way you look, the way you act, the way you're dressed. Make sure that hair all the way down is very neat. When you step on the mat, your presentation is representing the school. When you're outside of the school, at our jobs, well, y'all retired, but <laughs> um, this is your job. But at school, wherever I go, at church, wherever I go, I'm representing, first of all, I represent myself and my family. But then secondly, because trust me, I get called all the time, your student was shouted out. I'm like, what? No way, not my student. Yeah. So we're representing everywhere we go what we do because for whatever reason, here in the, here in Vallejo, uh, Soaring Eagle is well known, and it wasn't always that case, but it is now. So people know, especially if they see you wearing a shirt or a patch, they know you're a student here. And so it does get back to me. That's not an issue with you guys, but for some students, it, it very much is an issue. I should do this Oh, that's all. Yeah, yeah. I didn't recognize it initially with the hat on. Okay. Christian, you have something? Uh, yeah. Remember to take a walk. So if it's like a low rank, just trying to talk to you. Like, what is it? I say talk to you when you're not supposed to be talking or have a conversation is what you said. Remember to take a walk. You're not supposed to have conversations. You're supposed to tell them that you're not supposed to have conversations. So that, was, that was a good one. Because that was the issue that got me started off horseplay. And unfortunately, horseplay can start off like fun and games, but it can turn into something big. To the point now, I'm in a full blown fight, or I'm in di being disrespectful mode. Um, all kind of issues can come out of that. That's why we have it that way. Do we have games on the mat? Yeah. Sure we do. It's organized games. We play, we, we, we have you know instructors watching to make sure it doesn't get out of hand. But the very same opposite of that is, that's why we don't do it in the locker room with the doors closed. Or even in the back, we have to be careful with that because it can turn into something bad. And so we don't want to, that's what happens in school. We understand that, but we, we're, we're different. We're learning a different way, how to behave differently. Anything else? What else? Did we cover everything? Oh. Review? Yes, ma'am? Huh? Patience. Is one of them. Oh, talking about patience. That's, that's hard. Hey, can you believe sometimes I want to choke students? <laughs> and I know how to do it too. I, don't want to, I got a good technique. I can do it without leaving a mark. But obviously, especially for children and adults, they wouldn't keep coming if, if Master Jones is choking them out because they're being bad. And parents wouldn't keep bringing you. You know, in fact, they'd probably call the police. So we have to be patient and knowing that there's something inside every student. There's greatness inside every student. And our job as instructors and future instructors is to figure out how to bring that greatness out so they can realize their full potential. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we're all about as instructors. Yes, ma'am? I just want to say I tell Miss Aisha all the time she has great patience with us because she has all the run around. I just look at her, she just, you know, she's calm. She <laughs> never had a stress. You know, you're going, oh my God. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> What's that be like? I've been doing this 30 years, but 
I only worked in the, for the schools for two years. And I'd say every teacher should get a pay raise. They should make the same amount as firefighters and police officers because people don't know what they have to deal with every day. And now with the threat of violence and, and you know, we just had another recent school shooting. There's a lot on them. I, I don't think teachers make enough money and, and, and people who work in schools, they, they deserve more than what they get. Yes, honey. See? And then, then there was this homeless guy with a knife at our store and we had to do a lockdown. And I was just like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. I was just like. It's rough. I mean, that's it. It's people who want to do bad. And unfortunately, it's usually other students mm -hmm. who are either angry or, or whatever, for whatever reason. They know that schools are easy targets. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of kids running around so they can come in and do what they want. Mm -hmm. And that's unfortunate in our country because it doesn't really happen in other countries. So. All right, uh, okay, two more. Stop, and then Christian. Okay, 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 so what was the question I had to talk about? What, what, what we have done. We've been just talking about what we did today, but you want to talk about patience? Uh, it's up to you. I want to talk about something that kind of happened about in Zion's situation. There was like, uh, like I heard, like, there's like some type of done from like a nether college or high school and and since our school is right next to their school the, uh, also the police were involved with this type of situation we started running from the police so we had to go on lockdown because we didn't know so let me let me say this on that styles real quick for you guys that are still in school part of the goal here is to obviously train train you in self-defense mm -hmm train you in uh, self-control, uh, make you more courageous because of now you know you're trained. If something like that happens, not that you take over because you have to listen to what your teacher says to do and what those are in charge says to do, but there may be some other kids who are not trained and they have no clue and they're just scared. Maybe you can, hey, come on, let's go, let's go, or whatever you're supposed to do because you now know how to react properly in that situation. So the leadership now comes out, right? Where before you might just be afraid too and scared sitting in the court and not moving, but now your leadership, your training takes over and who knows? You could be the one, all of us could be the one that saves other lives. We just never know because those situations are gonna keep happening. Last person, then we got this next. So we have to have, as teachers, <laughs> We have to have self-control first. We have to have discipline first before we can expect it from our students, right? right? And so that's the last part of it too. And we've been doing great. And you guys, you guys are all high level students anyway. That's why I only invited Red Delton up because you all work out hard, you train hard. We have to be in better shape. You good? Good? Okay. Yeah, we're good. Okay. We have to be in better shape or not necessarily better. There's always students who are in top shape, but we have to be in good shape so we can expect now, I can't tell my student to do 50 push-ups and I can only do 20. Yeah. Right. I need to be able to do 50 also. I used to make them do 100, but I'm not at 100 right now. So we'll do 50 and break it in two, right? Break, do 75. I need to be able to do whatever I tell you to do. I need to be able to do it as well. So keep working on our bodies, make ourselves nice and strong, so then we can encourage others to do the same. Does that make sense? Yes, yes sir. sir. All right, so we're going to keep doing this. We're going to do it again. There's a lot of people who weren't here today. They should have been here, but you guys are here. So give yourselves a hand. I appreciate you guys. Again, the goal is down the road, you know, we, we're going to, I literally, I forgot about the vision of having multiple schools. She reminded me like, you said, I'm like, man, I, I got upset because <laughs> people quit on you. People say they're going to do something and, and they're going to do it and then they, they quit. And you're like, wow, I thought you were committed. I thought you were dedicated. But if we start preparing early, you guys, are, so your young ones are still very young. But five years from now, you'll be out of high school or close to it. I, I have a good friend right now. He was last. I got a good friend who owns multiple schools. He started teaching when he was 17. He's just a year older than me. And he has multiple schools all across the country. So 17 is not too early if you're trained and motivated and you want to, and he's a millionaire. Let me just throw that in there. Because his son is like, huh? Yo, yeah, you can make a million dollars teaching Taekwondo if you're prepared and you're trained and you know business. You have to learn business. I feel too old.
you have to be a good business person. You can't just be a good fighter only. You have to be well-rounded if you will. But there's income available, and I think people will always want to learn um, how to defend themselves and how to make themselves better. People will always want that. Hopefully, AI will take that over, too. AI should. Google that every channel. You know what? Don't talk to me about no AI. Stuff. <laughs> all right. I can talk all day, but we're going to bow out. I know parents are ready to go. Oh, you still recording? Oh, we're going to bow out. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs>